talking about, but and, and maybe somebody could fill me in on this. What I'm looking at is a transcript that says, uh, you know, when I get home, you know what I get to do. I get to explain the cold-hearted, stupid truth to him, so thank you. Now, what cold-hearted, stupid truth are they talking about? Yeah, Your Honor, this is actually in conjunction with another call that is coming in where J Angela is confronting Jake about the same thing. It's because they have told... Um, because Beth, Sophia is supposed to call Becky and Mommy, this upsets the apple cart because Bullvine believes that Angela is his mommy, and now George has to tell him the cold-hearted truth that, in fact, Angela is not his mommy. In conjunction with the other call that is coming in, um, and will be played, in fact, I believe, before this, um, you know, it provides that sort of context. Um, so... And I don't know what the phone call is between George and Jake. I don't think that's one, or George and Angela. I don't know that that's one that we are um, playing, but I could certainly try to isolate that, and that might provide the context, you know, because he hangs up with Angela, and then he confronts Jake about this. Well, look, if, it, if there's no context, I mean, how does the jury take it? What are they supposed to understand? Are they just supposed to guess what it means? Well, the ratting him out, that, that Jake is going to, would, would, would rat him out, I don't think there has to be context for that. Well, except the whole stupid truth. What truth are we talking about? That somebody, somebody's grandmother rather than their mother? And is that what they're ratting out? I don't know. I mean, I don't know what it is the state hopes to get from this tape. What are you trying to convey to the jury? Well, first of all, that whole beginning thing is that they're upset because of the, um, the bullvine issue. At the end, it's, you know, yeah, Jake, every time I try to get away with something, I couldn't do it. They let you get away with it, or instead of that, they... And then he says, every time I try and do something, you rat me out. I swear, I ought to go to BCI. He's the one who did it. He's the biggest rat there is. He would rat out anybody. I think that's relevant. You're talking about uh, he's going to rat you out to BCI. I'm sorry, wh where is that? That's the very last line. Yeah, there's a couple of things. It's the following conversation after that that puts that rat in What is context. the conversation? You can't even tell me what it is. How can you sit here and say it gives context and you can't say what it is? It was a short conversation or a phrase. It's a 15-minute conversation. Do, do, you, do you have the transcript, full transcript of it? Yes, I mean, Your Honor, because 3851. 3851? I think that was one, right? Yes. Yeah, that was one. We're just going to withdraw that. And likewise with 5539. Uh, what did you say I'm about 3851? We're just going to not play it. Oh, just, you're just withdrawing that. Okay, yeah. agreeing. That was the one where okay. it, it was um, 
you've got nothing to worry about, they can't have, and then it gets cut off by a voicemail. All right, so you're withdrawing that one too. Yes. And then 502, we are agreeing to pay all of that, if that is their request. Okay. With the caveat that we have to, you know, switch that out. I think 502 was the next one. All right. And then... Uh, I don't agree that that provides context. Um, they have asked to play it all. What was the objection to 17306? where he's telling the, the one that we're focusing on is um, basically him saying that they didn't want Chris and Landa to talk. How long is it? It's about nine minutes and nine. 24 seconds or so. Where it's the transcript. And they, they take a you know, 15 second snippet between 337 and 351. And then they resume 615. I'm trying to get these snippets because it should be put in context. I believe this is a clear recording. All right, so is there some reason why it'd be six, add six minutes to our day? I mean, again, Your Honor, we can do that, but it doesn't provide context, is our, you know, okay. thing. I mean, at least it's not as long, so I don't know that we necessarily care, but okay. we don't think the rest of it provides context. All right. Well, the defense feels it does. Yes. I have nothing in front of me, so... I have uh, two unsupported statements, one saying yes, one saying no. Yeah. The state doesn't have a problem with it, uh, nothing yes. in a prejudicial, and then the court will uh, order the, the entire tape, the entire recording be played. So it's 17306, which only adds six minutes to our day. With that, defense would withdraw its objection. And um, I can't talk about 3164 yet because I've not looked at that. Which one? The 3164, I, I, that's the one that I did not have the right 3164. Okay. Um, so since it's the wrong one, you're just going to draw it? Or? No, 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 no. We've got the right one. So what I, you know, our CIU analyst pairs down the, props down the audio to what we need for playing the court. I asked her for the raw recordings that I could take them and listen to them and also the raw um, transcripts if there were any. She just gave me the wrong 3164, so I did not have it. So she'll be here in about 15 minutes. So we'll have a whole new transcript too? No, no. Yeah. So the correct call is in our PowerPoint. I just was not able to listen last night to the full call. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Okay. All right. 
So, I think we start at 11 minutes or so, and so I, th I think I have to listen to the first 11 minutes to be able to speak intelligently or semi-intelligently. Um, so basically, I think we're down to 33, I mean 3164 we need to um, revisit once I've had that opportunity. Um, both 3309, which is the last call, and 150, we do not agree that that is relevant and nor and, um, or provides any context. Um, the 3309 is, I mean, they're talking about getting headstones for their dead grandfather. I mean, it, it's totally irrelevant stuff. Um, so 3309, I think what we have isolated is pertinent and uh, nothing else on there. At the beginning, they're talking about working for R&L and how he met some guy or Jake had a conversation with a guy that said he thought he recognized them and it turns out he knew Grandpa and they're from Jackson and I mean, it's totally irrelevant to anything. So uh, we do not agree that there's any context provided by the rest of that and that is a 32 minute conversation. And I don't know how much of that is transcribed that I can provide it to the court if the court, you know, wants or but wants to play it or what, what but. So you, ha you have a full transcript that you're looking at there? Well, see, it, no, because then it says call becomes not pertinent. <laughs> you know, when they talk, start talking about the headstone. So I do have the full recording, um, but you know, this is, I mean, this conversation that we have isolated in 31 or 3309 is, sorry, let me go to what our 3164 is on, on what we have. So I'm not looking at 100 different transcripts. Yes, on, on 3309? Yeah. That's true of all the all the recordings, isn't it? They're, they're yes. None of them are com complete, is that Absolutely, right? Absolutely, Your Honor. But there might I, be one or two. Yeah. yeah, I would think that he would be able to ask that on cross-examination, or I can certainly bring it out from her. I think it's going to be obvious, and I think that was covered the last time. You know, we're only supposed to be playing what's relevant and pertinent and all that stuff. Right. That's part of the interception warrant kind of idea, too. The court doesn't want you listening to non pertinent if I remember correctly, I think there's actually an instruction in the Jones case that talks about the, at least the transcripts not being the entire call. So that could be instructive with respect to if there is going to be instruction of the jury about this being just segments. That that probably is a good instruction if you take a look at it. Yeah, you know, we're all familiar with the law and with how these intercepts generally work. The jury obviously is. And so you know, my concern I may need the Jones site again. I read that. Uh, maybe I have a copy of it even, uh, the, the opinion. 
uh, is that the one also that dealt with the instruction about the listening aids? Yes, that is the, that is the case. The yeah. All right. yes, sir. I, I give you a site, but I don't have it in front of me. Right yeah, I, I think I have. I may even have a copy of the opinion here. Um, all right. So, and that's 3309. So, I'm going to, uh, unless uh, unless there's some specific objection other than just play it all, I'm going to I'm going to uh, overrule the objection to 3309. Uh, but I do think the jury should be informed that this isn't the uh, entirety. In, in many cases here, it's not the entirety of the conversation. Uh, and, Your Honor, to that end, too, I mean, there's times that appear on the transcript that they'll be looking at, the listening aid that they'll be looking at. You know, so I think it'll be... Yeah, that is a point the listening aid is not done. Yeah. The listening but, aid is right. I'm just saying they're going to be having that while it's playing, so they'll see that. Right, but they shouldn't be seeing that necessarily. Okay, well, so once it's you know it's determined or not. I mean, we, we don't want the listening aids at all. We think that it's clear enough where the listening aids are not appropriate. Does that leave us with, what, 150? Yes. Mm -hmm. Where are we with 150 again? Um, we disagree that it, um, that all of it should be played. Um, how, how long is it? Is there something that you can relate to the court as to the relevance to the other a few minutes of it or the other 20 minutes of it, whatever it is? Is it something that, I mean, I, I don't want to take up the jury's time listening to uh, static or nothing. Uh, I can tell you what happens immediately after, Your Honor. So when he says he would rat out anybody, okay, then he... George says something that is unintelligible, at least according to the full transcript that I have. And, it, and then Jake says, responds with, I'm the one that got him the $35 truck at the Lowe's truck stop the other day. It's supposed to be a $25 toy. Don't tell me I don't think of him. Dinosaurs or he loves pickup trucks. You know what? He loves it. George, yeah, I agree. Jake, he loves it. George, you're getting crazy. Jake, either way, I spent $75 on that. I got Sophie at $25 unintelligible. And then it says, non-pertinent conversation continues about, bull I know it about Granny. George and Jake talk about changing drivers at midnight and how much sleep they get. The call was minimized at 1422, spot checked at 1450. George says, how hard would it be to get our now to ship something out of Alaska? George says, might get a discount, how much it costs to ship our antlers and stuff on one pallet. It just takes some time because trust me, you're going to want them. Want some unintelligible with you. And then the call was minimized. So I don't see how that's pertinent, to be honest. Judge, we'll withdraw our objection. Say it again. We'll withdraw our objection. All right. Okay. To 150. To 150. I think that was all I don't see them. So six. Okay, so 626, the objection was withdrawn. We're, you're playing all of that. 150, the objection is withdrawn. We'll just leave what 150 is as it is. Um, the, um, let's see, 3851, 
I think you agreed to withdraw that recording, so basically. Uh, Fifty five thirty nine. You're also withdrawing that recording, right? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Five oh two. Um, you're going to play it all. Yes, Your and with Honor. That, and with that, the objection of the defense is with, withdrawn since it's all being played. Um, Seventeen three oh six. Also, you're going to play all of that. And the objection, therefore, is withdrawn by the defense. 3164. I need to listen to that. What is it? it, it if that's the one that I did, was not able to listen to last night, that our analyst was supposed okay, to. Okay, you'll have to listen more to that. Yeah. that the one we just discussed that we're yeah you overruled their yeah, request overruled to play that, it all that would be played just as well as it is here now, does that resolve them all it resolves uh, the, all the eight ones that we have not discussed now you also mentioned today that the 229 we can play the part where they say they know they're being listened to but nothing else so i'll have to look at that okay 3309 See, I, I intended to instruct the jury. I'll just let me just read this in its entirety, and, and I'll look at I'll look at some other uh, what we say about just being partial transcript. But um, ladies and gentlemen, you'll be hearing uh, some audio recordings with respect to each of these recordings. You'll be provided a transcript of the recording. These transcripts are being provided to you as listening aids only. They are being provided to you to assist you in understanding the audio recordings as these recordings are being played. The listening aids are not evidence. They are not intended to replace or overrule your understanding of what you hear on the audio recording. The audio recordings themselves are the evidence. The listening aids are to be used only as listening aids and are not as a substitution for and not as a substitution uh, for the content of the audio recording. Now, that's pretty much out of that Jones case. Uh, I feel like I probably should go on. I, we've, we've talked about this, but my feeling is that those uh, listening aids uh, are not to go back to the jury room. Now, if they listen to a tape and they feel like there's some fuzziness there or something like that, they can let us know if they feel like they need some other instruction about the, about the, about the video, about the uh, tapes. But my concern is if we send a listening aid back and they have a question about the tape, they're going to pull the listening aid, look at it real quick, rather than listen to the tape because it's quicker. And I, uh, I don't feel like that that would, I think that would elevate the listening aid to ev evidentiary value at that point, which we're not supposed to do. So, and I'll, I'll look at uh, something in the Jones case to see if there's something in there that talks about but I, I think I'm capable of telling them it's not everything that's being played anyway if I can't find some previous instruction. Uh, all right, so it's, uh, we have about 45 minutes before the jury shows up, so maybe you can work out your difficulty. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome.
attorneys, Mr. Parker and Mr. Nash, the state represented by Mr. Junk, Ms. Knepp, and Mr. Wilson, and also present is Mr. Agent Scheider of uh, Ohio BCI and I. Uh, did counsel discuss and resolve anything with respect uh, to, I think it was uh, 3164? No, Your Honor. Um, I would just like to put on the record kind of where we're at. <laughs> Logistically, um, we've been able to make the changes um, to the first 20 phone calls that appear, or conversations that occur. Basically, just before call number 502, which if you'll recall, we now are going to play all of it. It's just logistically a lot to, um, not so much the audio, but to the transcript, um, you know, merge that. Same with 17306, and then 3164 appears in the second half of our phone calls. So what I would propose is we do have the first 20 change the way the court has instructed. Um, I suggest we start so that the jury is not waiting down there, and then maybe we do an hour and a half for lunch so that we have enough time to get those others the way the court has instructed us to, and then we can also talk about 3164, if that's permitted. That worked out for okay. Do you think we can get through 20 before lunch? I'm not sure how long it takes. I don't know because, yeah, I've stopped keeping track of how long each one is. Some are very short, some are lengthier. Right. So with that, is counsel for each side ready to have the jury? Yes. Your Honor, if I may, would the court uh, be willing to uh, reopen and hear a couple cases on uh, audios 229 and 15811 in regards to uh, the threats against Agent Scheider? We found some case law covering that. What, what are you trying to do now? Uh, the court will be willing to look at a few cases in regards to uh, the threats against Agent Scheider. There's a 2018 State versus Gordon indicating evidence of threats or intimidation to witnesses reflect the consciousness of guilt or admissible as admission by conduct. That actually cites State versus Soak, out of the 8th District, which itself cites State versus Leonard, which is a 4th District Court of Appeals case, and it goes to say evidence of threats or intimidation of witnesses reflect the consciousness of guilt or admissible as admission by conduct. We would argue that uh, the statements made by this defendant on the wire, you know, one of them uh, in 229 discusses uh, the defendant committing a uh, violent act against Agent Scheider. That would be a violation, I believe, of uh, 290702. Additionally, in Number 15811, he's talking about that MF -er doesn't want to start pushing me. He starts pushing me. He's going to have a very bad effing day, and we would consider that a threat. Considering what the defendant was being investigated for at the time, and this being a threat directed specifically to the lead investigator on it, there's discussion that at least one point that Agent Scheider is listening in. And additionally, it's about head against the freaking pavement and his brain is going to come pushing out his eye. That is at least a one of these assault, if not attempted murder or murder. Under the circumstances, again, considering what this defendant is being investigated for, and Agent Scheider is well within his rights and the other investigators to consider this a direct threat and have to take precautions against him. Which one are you reading there? That this would be uh, 15811, Your Honor. That one is in our second batch of calls. It's in the latter half of the day, I suspect. The 229 that he referenced is the one that you said you could play the part where he says, you know you're listening to He says, Ryan, I know you're listening to me, and then goes on to make threats. Um, That's the one with the racist comments in it? I think so. I mean, yeah. he says... I'm not going to reconsider that one. We're going to leave that out. The, uh, now, with respect to 15811, 
I mean, he said, basically, he said black in there one time, but he's basically threatening yeah. to rape him. He's basically threatening to rape Agent Shire. I'm going to bend the MF over and, and him with his own junk through a sausage in him. Basically, that is 29 or 70. I think that's a rant. I understand what you're arguing, but I think that's a rant, and that's what I, I'm, I'm not going to reconsider that. I don't know about 15-8-11, does the defense wish to argue about that? Judge, it's very similar to being a rant, it's not a true rant that we've discussed yesterday, it's the U.S. Supreme Court case law, the client got charged with any criminal offenses with respect to the speech. Once again, these are interceptions when he's out of state, driving his truck with his driver's seat, so we don't even know where he is, the state doesn't know where he is, it's somewhere probably out west, there's no immediacy to whatever he's saying, it's not a true threat, he hasn't been charged with any criminal offense related to words or speech. We don't think it's appropriate for the court to change its decision at this point in time, we don't think it's appropriate to change it. Any advance of argument? Thank you. Do you have something else? In regards to these threats, actually, Agent Scheider would be willing to testify that they were aware that the defendant and his family were Googling Agent Scheider's residence, there were some precautions that had to be taken care of under the circumstances, that he's saying these things, and yet they're trying to find out where Agent Scheider lives, and one can only assume that they're planning on doing something to him, especially under the circumstances of what they're being investigated for. Basically, threatening to commit a violent offense. In context, I don't think that's threatening to commit a violent offense. I think that's threatening to commit a violent offense. I think that's threatening to commit a violent offense. I think that's threatening to commit a violent offense. I think that's threatening to commit a violent offense. In context, it looks like on 158.11, the reaction is to some remark that was made. I have no idea what it was. It's not in the transcript. I don't know if it would appear in any part later or earlier what the remark was. It doesn't look like it's a reaction. It looks like the immediate context was a reaction to a remark made, not to the investigation itself. I don't want to open this up to error when we get into undue prejudice as a result of emotional reactions to comments or things like that. So I'm not going to reopen that. Let's get the jury in. Let's get these tapes played. They're coming in relatively late anyway. I mean, I can point out that we haven't had these, I think, exchanged until now the whole thing were, but as far as identifying these and getting these exchanged, it's just been within the last two or three days. We just need to get it done so that we can get on with the case. So let's proceed with it. Are both sides ready to have the jury brought in? Yes, thank you. Is the state ready to have the jury brought in? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Good morning, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Um, today, uh, you're, you'll be listening to some audio recordings. Uh, with respect to each of those uh, audio recordings you'll be, uh, that you'll be listening to, you'll be provided a written transcript of the audio recording. Now, it should be noted that uh, several of these audio recordings that you'll be listening to include, include only a part of, and not all of, the conversation that took place. Now, the written transcripts that each of you will be uh, provided uh, are being provided as listening aids only. They are being provided to assist you in understanding the audio recordings as these recordings are being played. The listening aids, and that is the transcripts, the written transcripts, are not evidence. They are not intended to replace or overrule your understanding of what you hear on the audio recordings. The audio recordings themselves are the evidence. The listening aids, and that is the transcripts, are to be used only as listening aids and are not a substitution for the content of the audio recordings. You will not have uh, the written transcripts, that is the listening aids, with you during deliberations in the jury room. Now, is the state ready to proceed? Yes. Is the defense ready to proceed? Yes. Right, you may call your next witness. Thank you, Your Honor. The state would recall Ms. Evans Wade to the stand. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, as you shall answer unto God? And the state may examine. Thank you, Your Honor. Hello again. Hello again. <clears throat> um, if you could please state your name for the record. Julia Abbaslage. Okay. And Ms. Abbaslage, at the beginning of this, um, testimony, I would like to focus your attention on the interception warrant that was obtained in 2018, or interception warrant, warrants, plural, I guess I should say. Yes. Um, speaking of that, can you tell us um, first of all, if there was anything different that you guys did in 2018 when compared with 2017 interception warrants? Yes, um, there were a number of organizational uh, steps, I guess is the, is the okay term for it. Um, supervisors had determined that um, we should try to better organize the second time around. Um, we also had a, um, a bigger number of um, devices that were to be used, so we needed uh, additional personnel um, from outside of the, you know, the core investigative team. We just simply didn't have the, the coverage for all of that, so we had solicited um, efforts from other agents, uh, other analysts assigned to my unit, and so we had to um, give better training, more uh, case update type information. Um, so we had what was a mandatory briefing for anyone that wanted to uh, participate uh, in monitoring these devices. They had to attend this training. It was basically um, the you know a case summary kind of thing with with details about. Um, you know, the Wagners and about the victims' families, things like that, so that they could have a better understanding perhaps than maybe all of the monitors did in 2017. So we attempted to just um, ensure that everyone had a better understanding the second time around, uh, as well as um, just, you know, getting to know people who would be working together, things like that. And then the final step, uh, we created a subject matter expert position for um, someone who would be for every shift in the wire room, which was, I believe we had three shifts running, um, when the truck was gone. And so you had a person there that was kind of like a case expert. Um, I was one of them. My coworker, Dana, was another person. There were other agents who were part of that core team that knew you know, from day one to that present day what had happened, the details, um, all of that. And so those people were there uh, as a resource for other agents or you know, you know, personnel who weren't as familiar um, with 
the, the investigation as the, as the core team. Okay. And can you tell us, um, is one of those purposes in order to um, determine what calls are pertinent and which calls are not? Uh, we were certainly there as a resource. It was up to the monitor to determine uh, if that call was pertinent or non pertinent. You know, they were the person actually marking that in the system. But for reference, for us, helping to determine if a particular conversation was definitely pertinent um, to the investigation, um, you know, as a whole, that was what we were there for as a resource. So they were ultimately, you know, there to make the decision in the system, but certainly we were there as a resource to say, hey, you know, they're talking about this or they're talking about that. Is this something that we should continue listening to? And, and we were there, um, you know, to say, that would be something good to listen to or, you know, just keep listening to better understand, things like that. Okay. And was there also any legal training provided? Yes. Uh, so as in 2017 and with every other interception warrant that is obtained, uh, a person, whoever wants to monitor um, or be a part of the investigation with the wire has to do uh, minimization training. Again, it's just a briefing from an attorney and giving you kind of the... I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to overrule the objection. This is a training required by every interception warrant um, to monitor or participate in the investigation. So that was the same thing from 2017 to 2018. It's the same thing for every other interception warrant I've ever worked in my career. So. Okay. And you indicated um, that you had more devices that you were monitoring. Tell us about that. Yes, so we obtained um, warrants for the phones, and I'll have a slide of breaking down all of the devices and, and the names of them, but um, simply put, we had phone interception warrants, and then we had devices that were placed by our tech ops agents um, inside the RNL carrier's truck that the Wagners were driving every week. Um, so there were um, devices both placed in there, and then we had listening to the phone at the same time. Um, if the truck was parked, we were not listening to the truck. Uh, we had advanced you know, notice of when they would be um, you know, their schedule with RNL, things like that. So when the truck was parked, we weren't listening um, to the truck. Okay. And can you tell us how those devices in the truck worked as far as being able to monitor them? Were they just on and you just listened or, or did it work differently than that? Yeah, it worked differently than that. Um, in my prior testimony about the device that was placed in the Wagner um, vehicle in 2017, it was, it was like that type of device where you had to make a phone call to connect to the device and then begin recording that way. So it wasn't recording all the time. It required the monitor to call in, begin recording, and then listen and, and deem if they wanted to continue listening because it was pertinent or to get a better understanding um, or it could be minimized and not recorded. So it was the same type of idea as the device in 2017. Okay. And again, you previously talked about the, the term minimized and you just kind of said it there, but when it's minimized, is it recorded or not? No. Okay, so you can never go back and capture or listen to a part of the conversation that was, quote, minimized. Correct. Okay. <clears throat> and when you had this big training and, and case details were provided, um, do you recall who was providing that information? Uh, I believe Agent Scheiderer was leading it, or I don't remember who the lead was, but there were certainly, there was input from a variety of people um, on the core investigative team. Uh, myself and Dana, the other analyst that were um, assigned to, that was assigned to the case, helped prepare the presentation. You know, it gave a, a timeline of sorts, and, you know, there was input from different members of the investigative team, certainly. Okay. And do you have a rough idea of how many calls were recorded? I don't. Uh, it was more than we recorded in 2017, that was for sure, but there were more devices in 2018, um, the, but there was certainly more that was recorded and more that was deemed pertinent to the investigation in 2018 than there was in 2017. Okay. Um, and as part of being that subject matter expert, again, that required you to be intimate with the case details, correct? Yes, those were people that were chosen by um, supervisors at BCI or the attorneys that were involved in the case. Um, people designated as such. It couldn't just be like, I volunteered to do this. It was someone that was that was chosen, um, that had been there from the beginning. And I think, I don't know exactly how many there were, but five or six, I think, people that were that were there all the time. Um, myself and the other analyst, Dana, were, were the primary um, subject matter experts that were there in the wire room. Okay. 
And as a result of your um, participation in that um, monitoring of the interception warrant, um, I guess we should start with, let's talk about when it was um, first instituted or implemented and the duration of it. If we could go ahead and have the PowerPoint, please. I don't see anything online. Okay, um, we're gonna, um, this will be marked as state's exhibit quadruple I, one. And first of all, can you tell us what we're looking at? Yes, <clears throat> this was um, from a spreadsheet that we used in the investigation, but um, this basically outlays the devices uh, that the interception warrants were obtained for, uh, the dates of the original orders, and then if uh, an extension was granted by the court for an additional 30 days, that date is on there as well. Um, the trucks were granted two extensions, um, and then the phones were um, just slightly off with the dates of that. So um, on, the, on the far left side, you'll see the vanity name. Um, the truck devices were named TS and then an, a letter. So A, B, C, and D, uh, and then E, eventually one was replaced due to audio issues. Um, and so um, that one has a later date because that was a replacement device. But there were four devices in the truck um, on the transcripts. Um, there is a, a, the name TSA or TSB, C, et cetera, will be listed on there as well as the placement of the devices. So I, I believe the A1 was in the front passenger, there was one in the sleeper compartment of the truck, and so those would be designated on the transcript about you know, the location of those in the truck itself. Um, and then going down to the bottom portion, the phones, um, they were TT2 through nine, and those were designated here um, with the phone numbers corresponding to the user of that phone. Okay, and so, what was the starting date of both the truck and the initial phones that you uh, went up on? The dates of the first orders were signed May 24th, 2018. Um, I don't recall specifically when information started coming in the system, but that was the date that the order was signed. Um, and then the um, first three phones, um, George Wagner's phone, Jake Wagner's phone, and Angela Wagner's phone were additionally signed on May 24th, 2018. Okay. And then it appears Billy's was on June 4th. Yes, June 4th, 2018. Uh, and then the final three phones um, were um, second numbers that were later obtained um, through the T3 or the intercept um, for George, Jake, and Angela. So those were replacement phone numbers for the, the previously intercepted phones. Okay, so they had stopped using the first three phones uh, there and replaced them with these yes. phones. Yes, yes. Okay. And do you recall why you did not go up on Billy's phone at the same time as the other three? I don't recall the specific reason off the top of my head. Um, okay. I don't, I don't remember at this present moment. And it appears that you were, um, the last, 
basically, you, it, it appears that you went through the end of August as far as monitoring this. Is that correct? Uh, yes. So the the truck, the, first, the second extension was signed on July 27th, so that would have provided us another 30 days of listening. Uh, and then the last phones, um, George and Jake's phone, um, <clears throat> were granted extensions on August 16th, 2018, and I believe, like, the third week of August was generally around the last time that anything was recorded. Okay. And now the phones, tell us how they operated differently than the truck devices. So the phones, um, as I stated in my prior testimony about the 2018 intercepts, the phones are basically, um, in, in the most simple terms, the phone company routes a copy of the transactions that are occurring on that phone um, through their network to our computers to listen to. Um, that's the most simple way to explain it. And then it comes into our system. It's all maintained. Um, the truck data and the phone data was all kept in the same system. And you could easily you know, run them together. You could hear or see what other calls were taking place. And that was useful um, for the monitors that were assigned to the truck that they could, you know, if they heard conversation, they could know that one person was on the phone, um, things like that. So those were all kept in the same system. They were visible for all the monitors to see. Um, but not listen to, it was, you know, each person had an assignment when you were monitoring. So. Okay. And um, did you prepare um, some recordings for us today of what you deem to be pertinent conversations? Yes. Okay. And just as a caveat, um, is this an exhaustive list? Is this all of the pertinent conversations or did you uh, pick samples? Th these are a, a selection of them. There were many, many more. Okay. Um, Your Honor, before we play the first one, um, I don't. If you just want me to hand this and they can pass it around, this, and this meeting. Off the first one, yes. Okay. Object to what? But, Your Honor, we could have 
approach. I mean. The, this particular uh, thing that you're looking at here on the screen is not evidence either. The evidence is from the witness and from the, uh, the audio tape itself. Uh, so just so that you're aware of, of what we're, we're doing now, I think this is being presented to tr try to aid you in understanding, but uh, the court's going to make some rulings on what, on what we show and what we do not show because you need to focus on the evidence which is the audio tape itself, all right? And those listening aids that you have are just listening aids and this uh, that appears up here is not evidence either, all right? So you may proceed to ask your question if you have any more questions of this witness. I don't know. Um, if we could play, play the audio will be I can't help it. Your mom talks really loud on the phone. I was in the back room doing my um, job applications and stuff, and I couldn't help hearing that she was telling you that you want to respect me again. I'm sorry, I can't hear what did you say? So you couldn't help hearing what? I can't, I couldn't help overhearing because I was in the back room and I heard your mom telling you that you should suspect me again. Oh. Or more, more accurately that you should never have quit suspecting me. And, um, I'm kind of ruined the day. Well, I can't hear you. What was that? Like, 
are you just going to take what somebody said and just drop the subject? Because apparently somebody said something else that wasn't what she said before. Like she's first bit did it, she did it, she did it. It's not really sustainable to live under this kind of suspicion. Really, 
person who is so willing to believe it. Someone who is like jumping to believe that I'm worse than a murderer. All relationships are built by trust and destroyed by distrust. And this kind of distrust is it's eating away on my soul. It makes me want to just not exist. So. Apparently, my parents think of me until I get to change at the drop of a hat. And was that the extent of that? conversation that you um, prepared for us today. Yes. Okay. State's Exhibit Quadruple I-3. Uh, Terry, could you, uh, do you want the bailiff to gather these up? I mean, that's okay. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, that's fine. Get those. All the jurors, each juror should give your copy of that transcript to the bailiff. Here.
This is call number 471 for this particular line, and the date and time of the call is May 30th, 2018 at 2150. It is an outgoing call from Jake Wagner to Beth Wagner. Um, the context notes read, Jake and Beth Wagner discuss the dynamic of the Wagner household. Or, again, I, I want these provided to defense counsel before they go up there uh, so you have some opportunity to discuss or to object if they do to, to whatever the, the comment portion is. Um, this is identical to the last slide, Your Honor. Yeah, I, I'll overrule objection in this particular case, but I think before they go up there, they need a copy needs to be presented. I assume they're, they exist in hard copy form somewhere. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, can we play quadruple I wait, A? Now, can you play that, please? Okay. What part did you hear? I heard that you love me and it doesn't matter what she thinks about me. It's just matter what you think about me. You say that, but I live with her five days out of the weekend, you two days out of the weekend. You do know, right, that I have to pretty much stay away from the kids the whole time they're gone, and if they come anywhere near me, she freaks out. And if um, Okay, so I'm 
told me to be keeps trying to close me in the bedroom and If I was to not be paying attention 100% of the time, and if she was to succeed and close and lock the door for more than one minute, your mom would see that as a possible time when I could have been abusing Sophie. So I'm virtually constantly on edge and constantly watching and constantly having to make sure that I don't touch the kids or that they don't follow me in a room or follow me into the house when your mom's not in there or um, anything like that. And she's always, she's constantly watching the same way, like having to make sure that they're not following me and make sure that we're not alone together. And it is extremely stressful for everybody concerned. And, of course, the kids don't understand why they can't play with me, and so they keep being like, hey, play like this, play like this, and I can't do it, because, um, yeah. So it's just really, 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 a time when I wound up being alone in the house and alone in the room with either of them, that would be seen as a potential time when I could have been abusing one of the kids. Well, there's an easy way to fix it, but it's the way you don't like. What? Distance. Yeah, that is true, but again, that. It's like literally putting out a relationship in a mailbox and shipping it around the world to come back. Mm -hmm. Right now, that's practically how it is anyway. What is it? I said right now, that's practically how it is anyway. How do you think? It's pretty much on hold as it is. How? Because of how Sophie doesn't 
like me being here. You know, she's not going to accept me unless your mom does. You, you see that, right? Well, if your mom's on edge around me, she's going to be on edge around me. Try talking to mom about things, but honestly, it comes down to it. It really, I don't know. You really need to put your concerns in. Really, what? Okay, when it comes down, I said I could try talking to mom about about how you feel about this and that and whatnot. But when it comes back down to it, it'd be better if. She wouldn't care. That doesn't matter to her. See? Your mom could care less how something affected me. That doesn't matter to her. The only thing that matters to her is the kids and you guys. So, she doesn't care to least want how something affects me. Because, I mean, and think about it. If you had a snake in your house, and she sees me as a snake, if you had a snake in your house, you wouldn't care one bit how the, how the machete you're swinging at the snake affects the snake. You don't care. And that's the way it is. So it doesn't matter how something affects me to anyone but you. I don't know if there's really any way of making anything different. I mean, as long as that discussion is there, it's going to be like this. And there's pretty much no way of disproving that suspicion either. So it's kind of... I mean, obviously I could prove from this point on that I am not doing that, but there's no way to prove that I did not do that. And so, no matter what happens, that suspicion will still be there. Uh, 
I have to talk to her about it. I don't know. I'll figure something out. Other than that, what's, uh, did you tell my mom that the whole first week we was together in that house and I tried to have sex in the same room as so you? I didn't say the whole first week. I said in the first week you did. Because she brought it up. She said um, that sometimes Sophie is a light sleeper or pretending to sleep. And so you might think she was asleep and she wasn't. And that she might have seen something during that time. Like you might have thought she was asleep and then... She was talking about the the shirt off comment that Sophie had made in the living room. And so I did tell her that during the first week we were living here, you had sometimes done that sort of thing after Sophie was asleep, like looking down my shirt or wanting to... do something more in here. I didn't say that it was all week long. I said that just in the first week that it happened that you had wanted to do something in here after she was asleep. But that you realized within that first week me too, but that was not something that should be done. That happened. Okay. Don't you remember that? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So what's the big deal? I was just asking. Why? No, no, I did not. I feel like I'm living in Nazi Germany. Where? Nazi Germany.
Okay, and again, is that the entirety of the portion of that call that you prepared for us today? Yes. I'm going to show you what's been marked as quadruple I-4. This is uh, call number 621 from May 31st, 2018 at uh, 12.03. It's an outgoing call from Jake Wagner to Angela Wagner. And the context notes read, Jake and Angela Wagner talk about theft. Okay, and if we can go ahead and play quadruple I-4, please. Anyway, uh, Beth Keith at the library again. Yeah. What is she doing at the library every day for three or four hours? Using the internet. To put in job applications? Yeah. What is she doing in the room for three or four hours or all day long when she tells me she's putting in job applications? He's asking what job application is. that many jobs in Jackson and Oak Hill? Jackson, Oak Hill, Minford. Uh, she can't do Minford, Jacob. Now, she cannot work in Minford. Okay, I have a question. What is the big deal of her working in Minford, or even Portland? Because Pat's family is always over there. They have no they, idea who she is. I don't care. Did she get a library card to use that internet and stuff up there? I don't know. Well, Jacob, I think you do know. I don't know. You don't know if your wife got a library card or not. No. Okay. First off, she took up. Yeah, she took pieces of paper up there yesterday to prove her re where she lived at. So that tells me that she got a library card. Okay. And we were supposed to not do anything till after the seventh of June. Do you remember that? They know who she is. You know that, right? Wait, you didn't want to do absolutely anything at all to have to for June? I thought we were waiting. I thought we were holding off and stuff until after then. Not in the Southwest, You know what, Jake? No, no, it's only one. There is. I said there was. Memphis? Jackson. Why did okay. you put a good Why did you put a good work in Portsmouth? Just put a good work in Portsmouth. Okay. I heard you. Yeah, no. No, whatever. You know what? Just, 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 just let her go. Let her go to uh to work. Doesn't matter to me. What is the big deal with this? Well, I thought it was a big deal, Jake. I thought saving our butt and keeping us safe and keeping the kids safe was a big deal. That's what it is. Okay, I well, know how, how is important. Her getting a job. How is that a big deal of her getting a job? Well, I don't I don't know. Quit, will I? Both in which? Go to the TV room and sit down. Now! I don't know, uh, Jake. I mean, I don't know. You say we can't do this and we can't do that. You hide your truck and everything. Take everything off your truck and sell it so it don't even look like a normal truck. Basically give everything away. If it's not such a big deal, what'd you do all that for? Okay, stop. You are delusional. You need to You need to go uh, excuse me, Jacob. You will stop insulting me right now. You've done enough. Hey, you have done enough damage. You've done enough damage. Enough around here. Now, I'm telling you, you'll stop insulting me. 
you, you and your girls will not treat me that way. I'm not treating no way, Mom. You know this must be done. You need your hormonal medication or whatever that stuff is. But you are literally off the deep end. Now, really, Jake? Really? But you're making this out to be a big deal, and it's not. No, okay, that ain't clever. Yes, I don't want my truck to be recognized because if they are recognized, it should everybody knows what it looks like. Especially no one's Hang on a second. Listen to me, Jake. I told you. I told you. Listen to me, Jake. I told you. I told you. Listen to me, Jake. 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 I told you. When she tells them that they that she lives down here, what did you say before? You know what? I don't care, Jake. I'm just done. I can't help you no more. But I'm going to tell you this. I really, want, I really want, I, I want to. I want to tell you thank you, Jake. No, you're going to listen. I want to tell you thank you for what you did to Sophie. You did a really good job, Jake. What did I do to her? Oh, let's see. Beth is her mommy. I'm her grandmother. Uh... Beth didn't do anything wrong to her ever. It was just Sophie saying that, and um, everything's going to be fine now. She loves Beth more than me, and she believes Beth over me, and because I'm just her grandmother. <laughs> I never told him you was your grandmother. Thank you grandmother. so much. Oh, and not only that, because you had to go and tell Sophie that crap. Now she tells it to Bullvine. Now Bullvine has 50 million questions as to wanting to know how it is that I am Sophie's grandmother. So you've done enough damage. How do I do damage, Mom? You're not her mother. You are her grandmother. Now, the only thing I've ever told her along that line was when we was in Alaska, she asked me who her grandmothers were. No, I'm talking about this the other day. I told her. Unless you want to call your daughter a liar again, and you probably will, and I believe everybody else under the sun. No, I'm not. Just like... Okay, and again, is that um, a fair and accurate copy of the portion of that conversation that you prepared for us? Yes. And can you tell us on May 30th and May 31st, when these first initial calls are being made, was that prior to the investigators doing any investigative activities? Yes. And can you tell us what the significance of June 7th of 2018 was? There were a number of conversations that referenced June 7th of 2018. Um, it was in reference to a what was deemed a one-year mark of abandonment um, by Tabitha in reference to Bullvine. So there were, there, were, there were many references to June 7th specifically in, in terms of abandonment. If you could tell this, us what that is. This is call 626 on this particular line. It was on May 31st, 2018 at 1210. Um, it was an outgoing call from Jake Wagner to Angela Wagner. And the context notes say Jake and Angela Wagner talk about relationships with the kids and Beth.
Um, plain mouth, face exhibit quadruple I5A. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. No, I'm all right. I told her one time in Alaska that you was a grandmother, Meryl was a grandmother, Lindy was a grandmother, and uh, Grandma Geneva was a grandmother, and Gary Holman and Green and Green Lion was a grandmother. She never said nothing about it. Mm, no, she said you told her this just the other day. Whenever no. you have her make that go to town with you guys. That's okay though, because you know what? It has caused so many things that are going off now. I don't know how I'm going to fix this problem. Hey, oh, Layla, you told me that I should tell Sophie. No, uh, I said, I said that if you, if you chose, if you chose not to put Sophie first and not to believe Sophie and that you had to have that other part of life, then you would just have to tell her that. That would be your only option. That is That's not what, what I told you. Said. That is not yes, what it is. Said. Now, you said that if I felt I was telling me that it didn't happen, that's the truth, but it was, I should follow my heart and what God was telling me. Now you're telling me that she told me not to trust that I either don't trust Sophie or keep my wife to the curb. That's what you're saying you said? No, Jake. Look, you know what? I don't care what you do with your life. I don't. But from here on out, when it messes with mine or it messes Mom, with mine, I'm not mine, a or please. Or whatever. Do not cause problems. I'm not trying to. Oh, and another thing, the other thing is, the next time that your wife thinks she's going to cause problems whenever I am trying to get Sophie and Bullbine to calm down for a little bit, and you call me and then I'm like, are you putting the kids to bed? Let me tell you something. When I'm ready to tell you that Sophie's ready to talk to you on the phone and I'm really putting them to bed, I'll call you. Because I've never not done anything like that so you could tell Sophie, unless she just fell asleep and I didn't know it. What are so you I don't need about? To, I don't need some... Well, How did you know I put them to bed last night, Jake? That's told me. Did I told her to. That's right. Because uh, I told her to. Well, so let me tell you something. I said, make sure... I told her to make sure you call us when you go to bed. She's okay. Hung up, okay? And I called her. I said, make sure that Sophie calls me before she goes to bed. Well, guess what? Beth was hiding in her little bedroom closet in their corner wherever she hides all day long and sits all day long. So let me tell you something. I don't like snoopers. I don't like people who do stuff behind that's my back. That's not called Snoopy, Mom. That's called, I asked her to make sure when Toby starts going to bed, she's going to bed, so that she would call me so I could tell her good night. Don't you think she should have come to me and said, hey, are you putting them to bed? Okay. She no, said. I, re I reckon she shouldn't, so... You know what? What she said was that you put the kids in the room and you just reveal what you put them to bed, so I think she put them to bed. She does exactly what I yeah. told her to do. What Whatever. But I'm going to tell you what's wrong, Jacob. Because I am sick and tired of you making an excuse for every single thing that that person does when you act like you're so blind you cannot see the lies. What? Right Mom, in front of you. she's doing exactly what I told her to do. Of course she is, Jake. And it's a misunderstanding on my part, right? Right? Yeah. Okay, Mom. You're Uh-huh. Tell me that, Jake. Say it to me. What? Mm hmm I dare you to tell me it's a misunderstanding on my part. On what? Well, I don't know. That seems to be every time I can prove to you that she's lying, you always scream it. She said, it's a misunderstanding, or I didn't know, or I'm from Texas. Uh, Mom, I lied, but no, you have not proved she is lying. And everything that you have said she was lying about, I proved to you that it was a mistake. Not by saying, oh, this is what I think, this is what I think, I have to work out. No, I asked her exactly what you said about that deer antler, and she told me exactly what you said and what you did. And you said, not, you know what, she, she said, Oh, no, 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 Jacob, no, no, no. Away. That's exactly what I did not say put it away. No, no, no. I said oh, put you it up. You stood right there. You stood right there. And you said it. Like, I didn't say put away. I said put it up over there for her. Upside down. Put it away or something like that. Something, something, something like, like that. There's a big difference, Jake. Whenever I tell her to put it over to the side, or where Sophie can see it like boys upside down, and she puts it up in the top of the closet where Sophie can't even get it. There's oh, a big difference in that. Okay. 
Yeah, but that is a misunderstanding. She thought you said she put it up to make sure she hurt on it. How many misunderstandings is there going to be, Jacob? There could be a few, Mom, because she and I don't even have the same language. Uh, like she, language just, barrier. Like she clearly just got so mad at me for no reason at all. She wanted to get me a life sentence, right? That's a misunderstanding. Oh, too. my gosh, Mom. Uh, I, love you with that, I, I told you, I, I told you, Jake, I would not trust her. I told you that. You are on, I okay, tell Mom, you, uh, you need your medicine. You'll be a little more mellower. And, and what medicine, is, Jake? No, what medicine, medicine do I need? Hormone medicine. My hormone medicine is that's not due yet, Jacob. Well, which one is like five hundred dollars, Mom? That's my fibromyalgia medicine, Jake, that I barely ever take. Well, I don't know what what is wrong with mom. I really don't. But there is something wrong with you. Send it to the kitchen sink, Toby. What is wrong with me, Jake? Is I'm just just telling you how it is. I'm telling you what's going on, and you're not. You're like Sophie. You've got my bones, Sophie. Who I have been there through thick and thin, through hell and back for. Looks at me and tells me she believes Beth over me. Mom. She's four years old. She has no she's idea what's going on. She's four years old. She's repeating what you told her. I never told her that. Yes, she did, Jacob. No, I didn't. Well, you know what? Unlike you, I believe Sophie. And I'll never put anyone else in front of her. Bob, you are. No, you know what? Look, oh, you know what? I know you did, Jake. I know no, you did. No, you don't, because I didn't say that. Well, then let me ask you this, Jacob. You remember that one day you said not to bring that nothing? This is the last thing I'm ever going to tell you. You remember that one time when you told me it was horrible? I thought about it day and day. It was so horrible to even have somebody constantly rag you and say bad things about you and insult you, and you said, Hannah hey, done that to you. And I thought about that all the time. About how could she, you know, you went through that, and I didn't know it, and I felt so bad because you're my son. Well, you know what your wife does? She insults you constantly when you're not around. All she ever does is say bad stuff about you. So you tell okay. me how your life is so different. Okay, okay, so Mom. She says, uh, I'm La La Land and don't pay attention. That's not bad. That's the truth. Oh, and that you're naive and you're dumb and you're stupid? Okay, I haven't heard her ever tell me that she always dumb or not. It's but I tried, right, Jacob. Yeah. Uh -huh. And you know what? You would. Oh, oh I'm sorry. And uh, she don't know how to be a father to Sophie, or George doesn't know how to be a father to, to Bullvine. Should I go on or wait? I'm sorry. You don't believe a thing I say anymore. So you know what, Jake? I can't help anymore. And now you have no. Sophie. You are Sophie. Don't listen to anything I say. So I can't even help her when something really happens to her, and you don't listen. So she no. has no one. Bob, I love you. I really do. You had a mental breakdown. I'm serious. You had a mental breakdown because we're very sure that I'm going to move out and Excuse me? Bob, I love you. Hey, Jake, let me tell you something. You want to move out? That's fine. And you know how you take something. I can't stop you. But I'm going to tell you something. If you take her and move her in with death, I'll never get an ounce of rest. Because I know Sophie will be in danger. She's not in danger. But you, can't say, you can't say, I know she's in danger, Mom. You're paranoid. No, Jake, I know she is. No, you do not know she is. Yes, I do. You know, you don't. Knowing something is stone cold proof, Mom. Yeah, okay, like saying, okay, I saw stop. Jacob, when you convince a four-year-old that it was their fault that you sat on them and was jerking their hair with a hairbrush and you convince a four-year-old that, you are an evil person. I'm never saying another word because she's just getting more upset and I'm not doing it to her.
Betty, don't do it on my account. But if you love her, you need to think about things and stop thinking about yourself and stop I'm thinking about, about myself. Stop thinking, Jacob. Stop thinking that everything's okay because somebody tells you something. It's not okay just because someone tells you something. People are not trustworthy. You should know that. Oh, that's nice, Mom. But you said it's your problem, huh? It's your problem. If it's not one of the four of us, then it it's not trustworthy. There are trustworthy. Not when they do inconceivable things, Jacob. Not when somebody does inconceivable things like that has been done up front all, immediately. No. Mom, I love you. You know what? She thought that I don't really know exactly what she thought. I'm going to assume she thought that was a way of getting her to stop doing that. And you know what? It was wrong. She ain't going to do it again. It's really plain and simple. Yeah, she ain't never going to do it again. Yeah. Let me tell you something, Jacob. Can I tell you something about people? When you put Sophie with her and I'm not around, and there's no one around to see it, she's already gotten away with getting Sophie to believe that the first time was her fault. And the way Beth was raised and the, the, the mental issues she has with her family, it'll happen again, and it'll happen again. No. And you'll never know until it's too late, because Sophie won't tell you, because she'll be afraid that it'll be, it, it, she'll be convinced it's her fault, and she'll be scared to death that Daddy will be upset with her, and she'll ruin something Daddy wanted to make Daddy happy. You know what? It's, it's, and you'll never know, Mom, Jake. stop right now. If Sophie can hear you, that's what she's getting that crap from you. No, Sophie cannot hear me. And she's not getting it from me. And you're not blaming this one on me, Jacob. This one is all on you. I'm not blaming anybody, Mom, but you're overreacting. She is four years old. It's, but tell you what, she knows me. She hates me, doesn't love me anymore. She loves Uncle Joey. And then a couple hours later, it's that she loves me. So if she tells you she loves Beth more than you right now, it's not a big deal. It'll be her opposite whenever she gets a couple hours. We're having a breakdown over it. It's not a big deal. Okay, Jacob. That's fine. That's fine. Look, I... Whatever. I gotta go. Yes, you need. You need to go back to church. That's what you need. Jacob, I have faith. Okay? You and George need to get your life together. And you need to realize what's important. Because you're straying off the path. What? That's that what path you're doing. Of, no, straying off the path of what you think? That is? This has got nothing to do with me, Jacob. Well, Mom, I love you. I'm doing what I think is right. Okay, Jacob, let me ask you something. Do you think it's right to put bullpine in the middle of something, huh? Or to ruin his life? I'm going to hurt right. Let me tell you something, Jake. I don't trust her around Bullvine. Why do you think I don't want him in that bedroom back there? I will uh, never leave him alone with her, ever. Oh, Mom, I love you. I love you, okay? I don't want to tell you on that one. I don't want to tell you on that one. Let me tell you something, Jake. If you don't think it's odd that she said when she was telling me about what they did to her this, up until a while back when she said, what was it, I forget how long she said it was, she didn't even realize it was wrong, what her and her brothers was doing. Jacob. What? Did you not hear what I said? I didn't hear you. But did no, you don't you think there was anything wrong with that? Okay, first off, Mom, there is an on your side. Until she was 13, she didn't know. And then, until she was 21, she thought her family loved her, and she realized they didn't. Okay, hey, let me take that, Jacob. And break it down to the sheriff's office, since it doesn't matter who knows where we are. Break to the sheriff's office and let her turn those people in. Let her file charges. I told her to do it. I asked her how come she didn't do it if it was so wrong and she uh, couldn't stand them and stuff. And you know what she told me? She didn't have money for an attorney. Well, you know what? People who are sexually abused by family members and stuff don't need money, Jake. All they gotta do is walk down and turn them in. 
Yeah, it's true. And I've done, I've talked about it several times. And then what? Then what's the excuse? Well, it's two reasons. One, she'll have to go to the courtroom and testify, and have to bring it yeah. all back up and all the whole situations all back up. Well, if it, and, hey, if you want to get on with her life, she needs to do it. She's already got off her life. And two, she's afraid of her older brother. Why? Because they, you know, what's the thing about it, mom. I don't know if it's up. Yeah, she can, she can take him, she can take him to court, probably not. But if she can't, if she can't prove it, then it gets thrown out. Okay, Jacob. Let me tell you and something. That's what okay. she's afraid of. Because if she can't prove it, let me tell you something. Okay. If she doesn't do anything, she's accepting it, just like Tabby and them. No, mom, that is not. That is. Oh, my God. You know what, just, you know no. what, forget it. Because every, no, it doesn't matter what no, I say to you, you are giving up. You understand something, okay? Tabby embraced it and just went with it and then continued her life in the same way. Never got out of the boat, brainwashed. Okay? There's a difference between not doing something about it because you think it's right and not doing something about it because you decide to move on. And if the possibility that if they don't get convicted, then she's afraid of what might happen afterwards. There's a big difference with that. Oh, God, I don't know what to tell you, and I, I just don't want to deal with it, okay? I don't. It's, it's all right. Just let it go. And then there's the possibility, okay? Let's say, because her older brother is psycho anyway, let's say that he doesn't get sick, okay? Not only would that put her in danger, that puts me and Sophie in danger, because she lives with us. Oh, what do you care? You already put us in danger, all of us. Oh, how did I put you in danger, Mom? I put you in danger. Hey. Please, just tell me, how do I do that? Well, Jake, you just brought this in on us. Now we got to deal with it. You have to deal with nothing. Oh, I don't got to deal with nothing. Okay. Okay. That's all right. Look, just let it go, Jake. Forget it. It's all right. I'll take care of myself. Uh, just forget it. Seriously, don't worry about it, Jake. Okay, I'll never ask you. Never say, I'll never say another thing. I'll never ask you nothing else. Okay. Well, whatever, Mom. I don't know what No, I, no, I, I, I won't. Well, so, Mom, it's public. You just can't understand that it's possible that someone might think differently than you do. Okay? No, you can't. Can't. No, it is, because it's just the exact same way that these guys think that I must be lying if I think differently than a normal person. No, Jacob, it's the fact of everything that you are the one who told me. You, Jacob. You make 90% of our plans, okay? 90% of them. The things about Pussy and about Bullvine, you guys made those. I followed your decisions, Jake. Don't let them like I'm the bad guy. I did what you guys said. Hey, I've let you guys have the run of stuff for quite some time. And I've not said anything. Then you should have made some money, Jake. I was making money. Really? really? What were you going to do, Jake? Wait a minute. What were you going to do? Oh, yeah, you would never see Sophie, Jake, and Sophie was miserable there. So was Bullvine. Well. You know what? You don't care what I think or anything. Why don't you just go back? I ain't got the money to go back. Nor do uh, I have the resources. You can come up with some money. You can have your job back. I'm sure they'll uh, give you your job back yes, right yes. away. Yes, they would. They absolutely would. Yeah, don't be right. One, I ain't got to get there. And two, I don't know if maybe you didn't realize it's not, but whatever, your friend takes full by, don't be busted down falling. I'm not going to do that to her. Wait, you're going to take her away? You're going to well, take her away and stick her out? Well, I'm going to take her a couple hundred yards away. Wow. You know, I don't know who you're well, going to have teach her. Who are you going to have teach her and stuff, Jake, whenever I'm not there to do it? What are you talking about? Please, God, don't tell me you're going to have Mrs. Philosopher who don't know crap, teacher. Okay, Mom, stop insulting. You insult her every day. You can't quit insulting her. Let's just forget it. Hey, no, it's good. It's good. Granny gets that calorie and whatever she is or not. So I can come and know if I'm going to buy it or she's going to buy it. Then you're going to teach her. Then on the weekend, I'll help her. What happened? Let's go. Look, I'm going to go. Don't worry about it. Just forget it. Forget I said anything. 
I swore I wasn't oh, going to see it. Seven, seven. Uh, just because she goes to the library, so she can get good internet, so she can get the slides of that, so her phone doesn't crash because the internet's so slow. And the website thing, he gives the phone out of her phone, so she can use the computer instead. And I'm telling her to go this place, this place, this place, this place, to go for jobs. You think it's the end of the world. I don't think it's the end of the world, Jacob. Nobody never knows what that. she's saying. None of the people in Ohio, except for those of the people on top of don't even know what she looks like. Hey, I know, all I said, okay, Jacob, all I said was, wait, uh, look, I gotta go. I just forget it, okay? Just, yeah, I don't care. I don't care anymore, but I don't want to hear no more about, I don't want, you know, I don't want to hear no more of everybody else have to hide or not do something. <laughs> I think you need to hide from Patty until June 7th. Yes, I do. Well, whatever. Right, whatever. Look, I gotta go, okay? I gotta go. Just forget it, Jake. I'll just go take some meds. What? Nothing, Jake. I gotta go. Hold on, I'm coming. I said I gotta go. That's not what you said. Look, I gotta go, Jake, okay? It's fine. I just gotta go. Whatever, bye. Okay, and so that um, conversation, was that actually the full conversation that they had during that call? Yes. And was that a continuation of the call that we had just heard previously that um, I believe got cut off? Yes. Okay. And again, this was during the time before uh, BCI renewed its investigative activities. Yes. Showing you now what's been marked as quadruple I six. This is call number forty four um, from this particular line. This is uh, a recording from a device from the truck marked TSC. It was a device found in the sleeper compartment of the truck. Um, the date and time for the call was May thirty first, twenty eighteen, at twelve fifteen, and the context notes read: George and Jake Wagner talk about Beth and the kids. And just again as reference, did you find that some of the devices in the truck were better at recording than others or capturing conversations, I should say? Yeah, it was also dependent on who was talking. Um, sometimes the front passenger, if they, if they were both awake and talking, um, captured the best conversation. Um, we had oftentimes um, more than one monitor on the truck, so you could sometimes attempt to get better audio on one um, and you know have, have two different sessions of the same audio, um, just trying to get the better conversation. Okay. Better quality recording. Yes. Okay. But there certainly is, is road noise um, that was found in the recordings. Um, you know, they're driving driving down the road most times, so there there will be some road noise or you know the doors opening, closing, things like that. Okay, if we could go ahead and play quadruple I6A, please.
I don't trust you to make or be able to do the right thing. We're so while I was engaged on the run. Not because I don't think to trust her, because she don't have the know how. And she hasn't been a female enough to know exactly how I would want it done, so that she doesn't know how to do it. Council want to approach just a minute. Let me try to get some idea of our schedule. probably makes sense to combine this with our lunch break. So I'm going to instruct the jurors to be back to the uh, jury room at 1 o'clock. Um, while you're on break, do not discuss this case among yourselves or with anyone else. Do not permit anyone to discuss this case with you or in your presence. Do not form or express an opinion concerning this case until it's submitted to you for deliberation and verdict. Do no research at all concerning the case as to the facts or as to the law. From any source at all, do not read, view, or listen to any reports or accounts of the case from any source at all, and have no contact with the participants in the case, including parties, counsel, uh, or witnesses. Does counsel for either side have anything else you wish to put on the record before we recess until 1? No. All right, we are then in recess until 1. Uh, jurors to assemble at the jury room at that time.
the uh, state may uh, continue direct examination of the witness. Thank you. Okay. Um, we already played that one, right? Yep. Okay. Um, so showing you what's been marked is state's exhibit quadruple I-7. This is call number 150 from this particular line. Um, the date of the call was June 1st, 2018 at 11.40. Um, it's a recording from the device named TSA, which was a device in the front passenger portion of the RNL truck. The context notes read George Wagner talks about Sophia Wagner. Okay, um, if we could please play quadruple I 7A.
And again, is that the complete portion that you prepared for us today? Yes. Of that conversation? to show you what's been marked as quadruple I-8. This is um, from call number 1436 for this line, and the date and time is June 2nd, 2018 at 1158. Uh, it's an outgoing call from Jake Wagner's phone to Angela Wagner, and in this particular call, George Wagner is using Jake Wagner's phone. The context notes read, George and Angela Wagner talk about relationships with the kids and Beth. Can we please play quadruple I-8-A? Okay, well, as soon as you get home, I, uh, we got to have a family meeting. About what? About all of that. Mom, ain't going to do crap. Yes, George. Her. What? Yes, George. No, it's not, Mom. Hey, George, I like you. They're running around doing a scare tactic. And they're going to everyone they know that so happens to work for Granny. Okay, well, George, you know what? Listen to me, sweetheart. Listen to me. All the time, too, is just express the force that's all they need. They can't do anything if we don't. George, listen to me for once, okay? We're going to do a what if. Okay? What? We're going to do a what if. No questions now. When you get home, you get rested. Uh, I don't know. I'm telling you. Nobody wants to listen to me. If you don't come back, Monday, I'm finding a different attorney. And I'm going to no. go on the mother friggin' offensive and attack this mother friggin'. 
That's awesome because we don't have no money. Yeah. Oh, not like we did before. Yeah, All right, well, anyway. Yeah, well, I wouldn't. Uh, uh, <clears throat> Hey, listen, like I said, did, uh, did you get any money out of that Ford Explorer that Chris stole? Uh, yeah, I was. How much? Uh, I got a couple hundred dollars, why? Well, I just wondered, because, you know, they went shopping again and bought a whole bunch yeah, of stuff for Colton. Yeah, Oh, I know, he was supposed to have bought that, uh, semi. Yeah, I better tell you that before I get home. Well, you... Okay, that's fine. Are they uh, setting up? I got to load the cab and the bump and the frame on the trailer of the staff yard. I got to take both rear ends, the front rear axle, the engine, transmission, dodge shaft, so the jackie and fell down. Okay, well, that's fine, but you got to make room for a full line, okay? You just do I something with him. Other than that, George. All right. You can't do that. It's hot, it's nasty. You can't make him spend every single time you're home. Don't right. have to jump with Chris, who smokes all the time. Okay, Mom, I'll find something I can do with it. I understand the rent, so I get $3,000 from it, but the junk won't stay on profit while well, I've got dinner. So $3,000 gets you 100% profit. Well, that's good, that's good. I'm just telling you, I'm just saying you need their hopes, though, because they also went shopping yesterday with Mom to this okay. store, and they brought back a truckload of stuff. I know. I know what he owes me. I've got it wrote down, and so does he. Okay. And again, is that the complete conversation um, or part of that conversation that you prepared for us today? Yes. what's been marked as quadruple I-9. This is call number 1586 from this particular line. It occurred at June 2nd, 2018 at 1250. It's an outgoing call from George Wagner to Angela Wagner, and the context notes read, Angela and A George and Angela Wagner talk about law enforcement. Okay, and can we please play quadruple I nine A? This one too, that mom, it's scare tactic. That's what they're doing, and they think they're going to quiver and cower and hide like dogs and take it like a freaking little sissy. Okay, well, mate, you yeah, think that? Wait, wait, you think? Listen to me. Stop. Do you think that smiley guy that's on topics that posted that stuff? You think that that's one of them? It's another scare tactic? It could be, but I'm telling you, the last thing they are going to expect us to do is retaliate and blow up to the freaking news and all over the worldwide news. Everything that they did illegal to us and bring up the facts to the whole world. I know right uh -huh. now, the whole world doesn't know if they're getting ready to be indicted and be freaking investigated themselves for being crooked and paid off and bought off of the drug ring. Okay, you know the whole world, the, oh no, 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 the whole world knows that there's a bunch of dirty ones here. Yes, they know that, George. Well, but you blow it up to freaking Fox News, that breeder and the wine and Ryan and all of them are all involved in it. And their names are at the top of the list for the dirty ones. And then you blow up everything they did even to the other border. And once they threatened to make Sophie watch it, once they did the drugging the children and everything, and you blow all that up and let them see the world, let the whole world see what they did and how they really are, yeah. it will be a devastating blow to them. They won't recover from it. 
I think, I think we need to talk to that Angela Clemente because she's in with the people in Washington. That's I'm my opinion. Do that. Joe John to do that. So I'm telling you, if you get the higher up, if you get the, the main people in Washington, the FBI and everybody on your side, as long as all the world on your side, against them mother friends, they will crumple and they will break. You take the head off the snake, the body dies. You have to take the head off the snake. Yeah, I know that, George. I know. I know that. You, I know. Okay, I yeah, still want to... I love you. The only reason, and I'm sorry you're going to hate when I say this, everything that you and Dad have ever gotten in trouble for with Mother Fritters, the only reason they ever got away with the crap is because every time somebody caved, their fake crumpled. I ain't caving, and I ain't crumpled. It ain't happening. This time, I'm going on the offensive, and I'm going to be yeah. literally crippled in Mother Fritters where they won't recover. They will okay, well, George, let's... There's a single badged officer left in southern Ohio when I'm done. They George, stop. Stop, George. That crookedness does not just stop with the uh, here, okay? You you don't I work that way. I know that. But I'm going to crook them. Well, I don't know, George. Anyway, look, uh, i got to chase the full line sissy down. Showing you what's been marked as quadruple I-10. This is what's marked as call number 2085. Um, it's actually a, um, an MMS message, um, not a call, but it occurred at um, June 3rd, 2018 at 2304. Um, and so it's an outgoing message from George Wagner to Angela Wagner, and it had four image attachments. Um, the context notes uh, read photos of Beth's journal. Okay. And again. indicated that was an outgoing text from George's phone to Angela's? Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And I'm handing the jurors um, a black and white copy. Do you know if the pictures were in black and white or if they were in color? They were in color. And was that the extent of this, this was just a text message um, of these documents being sent um, from George to Angela? Yes, there wasn't any audio with okay. it.
showing you what has been marked as quadruple I-11. This is call number 2851 from this particular line. Um, it occurred on June 6, 2018 at 11.44 a.m. Um, it's an outgoing call from George Wagner to Angela Wagner, and the context notes read, George and Angela Wagner talk about Tabitha Clater. Okay, um, could we please play quadruple I 12A? And if Brandon got into one of those, you guys don't see that, but it looks very important. If you want to get through it, you can see her. Uh huh. The other one they haven't approved yet. Okay. Okay, well, we're putting swing set together. Sometimes they can get through that and see if there's anything you need. Do what? Am I allowed, you know, in a couple of days to say what I was going to say? Um, you got to make sure it's the date to uh, make the year. Like well, I'm saying, after that, am I allowed to say it or am I not allowed to kick anyone off? That's what I'm asking. I don't know, George, honey. Well, I asked, okay. I asked him if I was allowed to do that. And I told you what he said. And I couldn't tell, uh, look, it just, uh, he didn't really say a whole lot. He just, all he said was this, okay? She's not paid anything. No support, no nothing. Not gave a dime for him since he left. Who well, that? It's four years. It's all on four years. Okay, right. And for the last year, she has not contacted him personally. And he wanted to know the last time that she seen him in person. And I told him, and I said, she said, hi, I think, I can't remember. That was it. She just said hi. And I, said, and I said, she said bye. So I, said, the rest, I told her where we met, and I said, the rest of the time she sat there and had a talk with George. That's all she did. She didn't play with him. Nothing. He said, did she bring a picture for him to have? You know, here's a picture of, you know, no, mommy and, and that. all of that stuff for when you're gone or anything. I said, no. no. He said, I, I know, and that's what I told him. And he said, well, he said, uh, did she? Do I ask the FaceTime or call or ask the call? And I told him that. And I also told him that she has, you know, the one little girl, one's either already born or one's ready to be born. And here's what he said. She can contest anything that uh, if she wants to, anything you do as far as like custody or something like that, she can contest it in court. But when the judge sees what she has not done, and he's not going to give her any, she's not going to gain any more rights than what she has. And if she's lucky, more rights than she'll lose. So then he also, if we tear it up, what she can, the only thing that she can say, George, is you can, now look, I wouldn't just tell her to go F herself. I would tell her, hey, look, you've not put in effort. You've not sent this, this, and this. You've not done this. I offered to pay. You didn't agree because of your husband. So from here on out, if I want no. to send you something, I'll send you something. No, this is what I'm going to put. I'm going to tell her a prod. From here on out, that's fine. You want me? You want to send me a bunch of messages? That's how he's doing. I'll tell you how he's doing, but that's it. You've done messed up. It's your fault. I've tried and tried, and you've done nothing to hurt him. You know, since he was born. I ain't doing it no more. You're not being part of his life until he's older. If he wants to meet you, he can. If he don't, that's his decision. Okay, she's going to get a bump up what she's going to get. Yeah, that's, that's what I would do.
Or quadruple I-12. This is call number 229 from this particular line. Um, it was occurred on June 8, 2018 at 1915. It's a recording from the device named TSB that was found in the sleeper ca uh, compartment of the truck. The context notes read George and Jake Wagner talk about Special Agent Scheiderer. <laughs> Okay, if we could please play quadruple I 12A. Yes, I know you're listening to showing you what has been marked as quadruple I-13. If you could tell us what this is, please. This is call number 3739 from this particular line. Um, it occurred on June 9th, 2018 at 2116. It's an outgoing call from Jake Wagner uh, to Angela Wagner. Um, and it says George Wagner can be overheard in the background. The context notes read, George, Jake, and Angela Wagner talk about Beth and getting arrested slash going to jail.
quadruple I 13 A. I hope you I hope you're right. That's all I can tell you. I just I hope you're right. Honestly, we gotta figure out something because I'm just gonna tell you something. We're running on borrowed time. I have that feeling that we are absolutely, you know, running on borrowed time. That man is going is on a vengeance for us. I don't know why, but he is massively on a vengeance for us and I, I've got to make sure everything is okay. And we can't have anybody that is trying to ruin us. We just can't. Hey, one thing. Okay, hey, tell me something. You want to make sure that she want to make sure that thing right there is fine and dandy, and that's not an option. If I go yell, what she might do? What? Then tell John that I was up there. Me and her will walk in John's office. He can witness. And then she can tell it's all paper and whatnot. That if I go to jail, that your design's still there. And if she's not going to change, you'll listen to Smith. That's not her kitchen whatsoever. And John's a witness. Well, then you know that's a possibility, Jake. But Rosenberger, when he told me about that's basically a prenup is what that is. And Rosenberger, when Thorpe was getting married, Rosenberger told me those really don't hold up unless you're in California or somewhere and you've got an attorney that you're paying a couple hundred thousand dollars to. Now, the other thing you could do, I'll tell you something you can do, and John mentioned it, we can hire a private investigator. Private investigator can find out everything in a short period of time and tell us every single thing, everything about it. And exactly how much is that call? I don't know, but I have a phone number. I can make a phone call Monday morning and tell you. I mean, no offense, Jacob, but as quick as you jumped into that and stuff, it probably wouldn't hurt you to know some background. You know what? You go ahead, go ahead. I, I don't want to make you mad, Jake. That's the thing I don't want to do. I mean, we're already got the world mad at us. I don't want you mad at me. I want you safe. You, you understand? Yeah, I, I understand. Here's something else. That You can do whatever floats your boat, okay? You know what? I did ask God that whatever you needed, you, you can have. Whatever you needed, have him show it. Me, I got everything I need. I have my faith in God. You do what you want. You will not make it that. You okay, are on you. I have faith in God, okay? I do. I know God is keeping us safe. I don't have faith in humankind. Because do their, free, their free will, their free will... You know, get them. I mean, you said so yourself, Jacob, that night that she come up with quick answers so fast that after what we've been through, it just blurts out I'm lying because the answers are too quick and too perfect. No. You no, said that not, yourself. Not too perfect. No, just too quick. But I do the same thing. And be shy. No, that you don't. No, no, yes, I do. I do that all the time. And now I'm just BCI, that was everybody. No, I'm not lying. Even before BCI, I wasn't lying. I'm just saying, when I was done with BCI, they said it looked like I was lying. So apparently okay. being that looks like lying. Okay. Have you ever caught her in a lie, Jacob, except for the one, that one you said you caught her in the wedding night or whatever that thing was? Have you ever caught her in any more? Not a single one. No. No. So when you ask her about that paperwork that night that she wrote that on, did she instantly tell you she did it? She said, I, I, I told her that, have you ever written anything down about BCI or, uh, or what, how did I say it, BCI or something like that? And she said no. Never anything at all about you uh, giving information or something to BCI. 
And she said, no, I've never written anything about BCI of any of the sort. I said, okay, so you're saying that you did not write a letter or write down and said she was going to turn mom in doing something that she didn't do, something like that. And she said, I never wrote down anything about BCI. Uh, I had to write down something when I was angry, but it wasn't about BCI. It was just changing or not changing. It was, uh, how did she say that? I get the word she used, turn around about angry that there's something of the kind. I said, okay, so you're, so did you write a letter that wrote, or that said uh, something that he was angry with mom and that he was going to uh, say something and get her put to jail or the prison for a while? And she said, no, I did not write nothing like that. I did write something that it would be horrible that I could. And I told her the severity of such a thing. Okay. I, there's no way. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, anyway. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Which is like it is. It's all my phone. I read it in person. It does say that. I got it back. Yeah, well, guess what? Pull it up, but yes, it does say. The horrific fact is I have the power to do this, this, and this, get down a but it would not be true. It's exactly what it says. Yeah, yeah, it does, Jacob. It does. Do you mind it's just, it does, okay? It, it just, I tell you, listen, listen, look. Here's what I'll hear. Listen to me. The only thing I'm, I'm trying to tell you is I think... This could be just an honest mistake. It could be an honest person who is really had a rough life and just honestly trying to fit in and everything is, is a muck, okay? It could be. Or every or single time or every single time that something is questioned or comes up. Your wife is the whole freaking family wishes she was She could be a witness. What is he saying? Not me. Maybe not you. Hey, wait a minute. What is he saying? He said that at least she could be a witness that says we have arrested. That the whole family, that me, that me, wishes she was him. Well, you don't want to say that. I got my gosh. I'm I'm not don't. Not. No, we don't want that. Just don't even, just don't even talk about that. Just don't. Okay, that, that's wrong wording. I mean, that's really it wrong wording. Oh, oh my Lord, that's... That, just tell him don't talk. Best thing to do is just don't talk. You don't remember, you don't know nothing, you miss everybody dearly. That's the only thing you need to tell them, people, because let me tell you something, they're going to twist everything we say anyway. So I'm not saying the word. The best thing is not to say a word. Because, yeah, no. people say we're taking it the wrong way. They will use it yes. the wrong way. Yes, absolutely. No, I'm just going to let the attorney talk. And I'm not saying nothing. Well, now, just don't say a word. Just tell him not to talk. I'm talking. Just don't, don't talk. Tell him not to talk. No, it's not. Don't, don't talk. Tell him I said so. I, you know, yeah, I would like her to be alive, yes. Yeah. But you always wish to Beth? No. I would like to wish her Beth her? No. I didn't marry him. I married hey, Beth. Did... Okay. Look, you want to do what you want to do? I'm, I'm, I'm not mad. I'm upset. You're, you're paranoid. It's fine. You can use the right to do. You can do whatever you want. Okay? I just, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm not stopping. I'm doing what I think. You want to do your thing, you do your thing. And my, and my, and my fault, you're going to be wrong. Your fault, I'm going to okay. be wrong. So you okay. no, 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 I didn't say that. I'm saying I'm hoping, but I do want to know. Now, tell me I said, if I wasn't married to your dad right now, and there, I had a boyfriend, okay? And Sophie and Bullwine was in concern, and you guys, and life sentences, and, you know, and dying. Because I'm not taking a life sentence, Jake. I'm going to take the electric chair, and I'm going to die. I'm telling you. If they Why? frame us, if they frame us, then I'm not sitting in prison. You will not see the kids. They will not let them come see you. You'll you sit in there, and you you'll, sit in there and you'll have to fight them retards off every single day. I'm not doing that. 
I'm saying, I'm saying I, if I, they I frame it. it. Uh, yeah, you know what? Either way. You want know to go right ahead and do that. I'm not. I'll take my life sentence. They won't keep me in there forever. That just means I've got 60 years to get out. Baby, I love you. you, you it's, it's a fighting battle every single day in those places. I don't want to do that. Well, Mom, um, I love you. you got no balls. You're taking an easy, if that's what you're going to do, you're taking an easy way out. I'm not that way. You're not thinking clearly, Jacob. Oh, yeah, I am. You're not. Oh, yeah, I am. No, you're not. No, you're not. You think? Okay. Who do you want, George? All through the day, do frame us when we get there and we're going to share the options. She's going to take the death penalty instead of the uh, life. She won't have to deal with the whole, being in prison for her whole life. Or you think? You would let the jail, would you rather have a life sentence? You at least have a chance. No. You take life sentence, come on. I'm sure they can have a life sentence, I guarantee you the first officer stands by me. Whatever. You go ahead. Right. Kill me for the bullets. I'm gonna kill everyone I can. Make sure I'm happy. I'm gonna make sure 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 i they, they probably do. They probably do, so you need to stop talking about it. I don't want to kill anybody in their life. Ryan, I want to kill you. George, shut up. Oh, my God. I'm trying to get off the caffeine. He's going to he's gonna run the weekend. That's all he does. He runs the weekends when he comes home. Bullvine waits all week for him to come home. You need home. to have a smiley face when Bullvine gets to him. You get there, Bullvine. You got a happy ass. Look, Bullvine. Yes, because he is all really, week long has talked nothing really about really happy. Don't screw up the weekend for Bullvine. Be happy. Look, anyway, Jake, look, I just, all I don't want you to do is I don't want you to say anything, okay? I'm not saying a word. I'm telling you, do what you want, and I don't want no part of it. That's all right, that's, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's perfectly fine. But anyway, look, I, I hope it'll work out for the best. But I want to, uh, I do need to talk to you two when you get home, and I don't want to talk on the cell phone because I don't want some idiots to hear every single thing I say. Does that represent um, a complete recording of the portion of that conversation that you prepared for us today? Yes. And just for clarification, um, they talk in there about suspecting the house is bugged and other things are bugged. You talked about in 2017 the vehicle in, that they had driven to the board in Montana. There were devices placed in there, correct? Yes. And phones were monitored in 2017 as well, correct? Yes. Um, and then for 2018, this truck and phones as well, correct? Yes. Was there ever any listening devices installed in, in any of the homes that they lived in? No. Okay. Or Frederica Wagner's home or anybody else's home? No. Okay. show you what has been marked as quadruple I-14. This is call number 5176 from this particular line. The call took place on June 12, 2018 at 1514. It's an outgoing call from George Wagner to Angela Wagner, and the context notes read George and Angela Wagner talk about Beth.
go ahead and play uh, triple I 14A. Are you missing? Wait. Sorry.
and he puts her name on there and he gets arrested? Yes, it's hers. Sophie will get nothing. No, and she'll leave with it. I know that. None of us have a chance. Look, I got the altar. He's coming back to the track. I love you. Hi, right, love you. Keep the witnesses. Stay off tonight. Keep family as a witness within sight at all times during daylight hours. Mm -hmm. And Mike, keep trying to do that deal and find me a way of being home, Mom. I don't right. like leaving you on the Okay, train. gotcha. Gotcha, you gotcha, gotcha. It's hard sometimes. Okay, gotcha. Okay? Yeah. And without me, I gotta get Bubba. I, I got, got okay, I that's fine. No country, all pipe time, everybody got to get us. I don't like getting away where I can't touch your mind. George, that's fine. I got it. Okay? All right, love you. Love you, bye. And was that actually the entire conversation um, for that call? Yes. Quadruple I-15. This is call number 260 from this particular line. It's a recording from the device named TSB that was found in the sleeper uh, part of the truck. It's dated June 12th, 2018 at 1608, and the context notes read, George Wagner talks about Beth and family. Okay, if we could please play quadruple I-15A. No, Dave, you shouldn't have to. You shouldn't have to worry about the person you trust or trying to take care of and support. You can just get your hard earned money on a freaking car and help get a roof over there and spend four, five, six hundred dollars on her new clothes and stuff. So you go out here and work your butt off and spend dog five days a week away from your daughter? You shouldn't have to worry about her lying or getting molest your daughter. You don't have to worry about that. All I want you to know, they come down to it. We can get the only one that makes me have five sons, mom, me, and dad. That's it. No matter who it is or who's in them, that's the only one that makes me count on. Um, reflect the portion of that conversation that you prepared for us today. Yes. I'm going to show you what has been marked as quadruple I-16. This is call number 4744, dated June 12, 2018 at 2139. It's an outgoing call from Jake Wagner to Beth Wagner's phone, and at the time of this call, Angela Wagner was using Beth's phone. The context notes read, Angela Wagner talks about Tabitha Clater.
And can we please play quadruple I, 16A. Hello? Hey, is your brother asleep? I think so, why? <clears throat> okay, when he wakes up, I want you to ask him something for me, okay? Okay, uh, I think, like almost 99% sure, that Tabby is using her old Facebook page under Tabby Breach, the one she had when him and her were together. Yeah. And um, I think she's up to her old tricks again. I think she's got, you know, a bunch of guys, you know, running and stuff. You know how she does. But anyway, pretty sure she's using that page. So ask him if he remembers uh, what the thing is for that page. Okay. Okay. Yep. And I don't care what time it is, just have him call me. Okay. All right, are you doing okay? Yeah. Okay, well, we got half our pile of gravel moved today. Okay. Okay, I love you. All right, love you, bye. Again, is that, um, is that copy of that portion of the conversation that you prepared for us today? Yes. been marked as quadruple I-17. If you could please tell us what that is. This is call number 719, dated June 13th, 2018 at 1126. It's an outgoing call from Billy Wagner's phone to George Wagner. And at the time of this call, Angela Wagner was using Billy's phone. The context notes read, George and Angela Wagner discussed coming back to Wilmington due to a, quote, family emergency. the exact order of events and off the top of my head um, around the time of the text message. Well, I suppose that's a, you ask us, you know, and that should be a yes or no, I guess. Okay. Do you know what was occurring in the investigation at that time? Um, there were pictures being shown of a uh, hand holding a gun um, okay. to family members. And if we could please play quadruple I 17A. It's a picture of Jake's hand holding a pistol with a silent girl. Come on, you want to pick up the phone? Hello? Hey, what did you need? Uh, Jay called West Yonder, and she didn't answer. I'm going to help with Temple and Fort Smith, and I am going to unload and tell them I'm family emergency coming back to Wilmington. Hey, listen to me. I don't know what Chris told you uh, or anything like that, but I just got off the phone with Mom, and Mom said that it was a black guy, and I think James that was out there. They said they came just yeah. to talk and said that they showed a picture of a yeah. pistol. It's a man's hand. No, they said a picture of a pistol by itself, a picture of some kind of silencer, a picture of a pistol with a silencer, and then a picture of Jake's hand by itself, and then a picture of Jake's hand holding a gun. Well, mom said, mom 
said, Ron said the picture with Jake holding the gun, Jake's hand supposedly holding the gun, had the silencer on it. Okay, so. Mom said, but mom said, mom said that it looked like maybe it didn't, she had never even seen it before. But the thing is, she said they came out there just to talk and said that they were ready to lock things down. But I asked mom who they were ready to lock stuff down on, and mom said she didn't know that Chris was out there, that they wanted to talk, and she told them that we had an attorney for and not to talk to them to leave. And she said, he asked okay. her, said, well, do you have an attorney? Mom said, no, but this property is mine, and I'm telling you to get off. Well, anyway, hang on a second. Anyway, I know Chris on that really, uh, Chris said they were looking for Jake and Jake only. And look, I want you to make sure. I want to know if one of those pictures had a picture of Jake Hand on a gun with a silencer on it. Uh, or even uh, how he knew it was Jake Hand. Because the, Chris told me that it just even looked like Jake Hand. They're saying that it looked like Jake Hand with Jake tattoo on it. Which it looked like. Yeah, that's what they're screaming. And Jake had never freaking touched it in his life. Because they could do anything. They're making crap up. All right, look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let I'm you go. Right. Right, bye. All right, bye. And Ms. Evans there is a, a part of that um, call at the beginning where Angela and Billy are talking, and you had, you know, in the background on this listening aid. Um, that appeared to be recording conversation before George actually picked up the phone. Sure. Is that correct? And basically, it's well, I well, I, you know, I'll, I'll permit you to replay a portion of it if you wish to. Well, I'll ask it a different way, Your Honor. Say it again. I'll ask it a different way. All right. Okay. If I have a phone that you are monitoring on an interception warrant, and I call Mr. Junk. While the phone is ringing and before Mr. Junk picks up, does that uh, interception warrant begin to uh, record anything that I say while I'm waiting for him to pick up? Yes. Okay. Showing you what has been marked as quadruple I-18. If you can tell us what that is. This is call number 5580 on this particular line. It's dated June 13th, 2018 at 1229. It's an outgoing call from Angela Wagner to George Wagner. And the context notes read, Angela Wagner tells George Wagner not to say anything on the phone. Okay, and if we could please play quadruple I, 18A. Hey, listen, I gotta tell you something, okay? This is real important, just I'm gonna tell you this real quick, and then yeah. we're not gonna get, don't talk about nothing on your phone. Oh, no. Wait till you get home. Don't explain anything. Don't say a word about anything. Watch everything you do. The other thing is, if they arrest you, 
Don't sign nothing. They don't say nothing except I'm not talking. Don't, don't even tell them your name. If they oh, tell no, you to, no. if they take your wallet and everything and say, we just need you to sign this for your wallet and everything, tell them, no, my no. attorney will take care of it. I don't know. I, I don't think the community is going to arrest, Mom. Do what? I don't think they're going to arrest me. I'm just telling you, George. Make sure I, Jake understands. Don't say a word. Uh, Mom, I told you not to say a word to sign anything already. They said he's not. He's a wait on job. But they're going to need. Showing, everything that they're trying to point out is all on Jake. Has been since the team. So they're probably going to arrest Jake. I know what's happened, George. I, I know. I got we, your dad got this figured out. But now listen to me. Are you listening? Make sure he does. And I don't want him talking too fast about anything. From here on out, it's hi, honey, how you doing? Love you, blah, blah, blah. Well, well, tell him everything that happened and everything you said and everything that you Tell him to stop. I tried, Mom. Because they are probably listening to your phone. Hey, would you listen to me? That other stuff that I told you to speak to? He knows about it. He's severely sick. Jimmy? Hello? Hello? Huh? Hello? 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 And again, is that an accurate um, copy of actually the entire phone call, uh, yep. that particular phone call? Yes. going to show you what has been marked as quadruple I-19. This is call number 5295, dated June 14th, 2018 at 1012. It's an outgoing call from Jake Wagner to a number for um, RNL Carriers Dispatch. The context notes read, Jake Wagner calls RNL Dispatch reference a family emergency. Okay. And what is RNL? Um, it was at the time the employer of Jake and George, RNL Carriers Trucking Company, the same owners as the truck that was had the devices installed in it. And can we please play quadruple I, 19A? Okay. Well, that was how it works. I got a, I got a family emergency back at home. So I just, with my load, whatever I'm down here, if I get down there, I need to go sleep somewhat. How about the woman? Gotcha. Well, let me get you into Mr. Smart then, because if you got a family emergency and need to go home, you you always have to speak to manager or director. And Randy's in charge. That's okay. the guy we all. That's the guy we all work for for any days off or anything. Okay. Okay. All right. Right now, the load, St. Louis. Anyway, uh, 
when we get down to Dallas, when we get our going back to Wilmington, uh, I will I talk to the actually. Anyway, I have a family emergency I got to care about the house. And so I, I can take the load down to Spencer and I take one back to Wilmington or or maybe you should go over a couple hundred miles to get a load back to Wilmington. But I gotta okay it so that when I get back to Wilmington I can take that I think it'd be like uh, probably an hour, a day, like a day off early. Okay. Is that possible? Um, Oh, we're busy. I mean, if it's a family emergency, we gotta, we'll work with you. We definitely go on. If it's an emergency, the emergency family comes first. I have no problem there. I'll, we'll probably keep your partner running, though, because like I so said, we're, we, we're, we're kind of, we're backed up right now, so we'll, if you go home, we'll probably still need to keep him running. Well, that's, that's the situation. My partner is my brother, and it's a family emergency. We're both of them. Okay. Well, I like to know Sue Nexus is going to come back to Ohio, and we'll be okay. back to Ohio Saturday Afternoon, probably, so it would be cut probably uh, an east, probably east coast loadout, probably what it be. Okay. We'll be back Saturday evening. Probably, well, actually, probably Saturday afternoon, probably about 5 or 6 p.m. Okay. I'll let you guys know. We'll get you to Dallas. We'll try to get you back, head back as way as soon as possible. We'll get you back as way as soon as possible. All right. Thank All you right. very much. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Okay. And again, is that an accurate um, copy of the recording that you prepared for us regarding call number Showing you what has been marked as quadruple I-20. This is call number 2620 from this particular line. It's dated June 14th, 2018 at 1216. It's an outgoing call from Angela Wagner to George Wagner. And the context notes read George and Angela Wagner talk about that. Okay, and if we can please play quadruple I-20A. Well, here's another thing. Your dad heard the conversation, and I'm going to tell you something else happened last night, and your dad was here. Guess what happened? Uh -huh. I put in two trays of ice in the freezer. The yeah. little one that looked like the you get the Oreos in, you know? I hadn't filled it up yet, right? And your dad was wanting ice yesterday because, you know, for his diet pop. Well, while your dad and I were watching TV and everything, Beth went in there, she filled that little Oreo went up and put it in the freezer. Well, when I went in last night, that dad and I was watching a new, a new movie, Chris Scott, and I went in late and I got some ice out of that Oreo thing and I fixed me an orange pop. That ice tasted like that nasty, disgusting medicine again, okay? I took it in there. I told your dad, I said, smell this. He, he's like, oh, it's disgusting. I said, take a taste. He took a taste and about cute. So I take it in now, I oh. pour it out. No, wait, I take it in. Listen to me. Here's the thing. He wouldn't even drink it. I took it in there, I poured it out, I put the rest of the ice cubes down in the sink. I got my ice cube tray out. It's already frozen with a little fish. But when I'm in my mouth, it tasted just fine. I got a glass of water out of the sink. I tasted it until the let your dad taste it. Nothing, no bad smell, no bad taste. Something is wrong. I'm just going to tell you that there is something wrong. And she's been in that. 
Is she on the phone? Wait, is she on the phone? Yes, is she on the phone with Jake? I don't know. Well, she's still in that house, and she I'm waited until I turned my back. Hey, listen to me, Mom. Jake's dead. There's what's on the papers. What I say is on there, but it's a direct case lie to what she's told him. He said, that's it. What part? He said, he won't put up with a liar. What part did you tell him about? All of it. Well, George, you were right there when I read it to you, so you couldn't have lied to me. <clears throat> no, but I told him, I said, Jake, well, there's no such smart child saying miscommunication on any of it, but you can't miscommunicate, I hate God. Well... Anyway, I still got those papers. I think I'm going to go get them right now and put them under lock and key. You know, when I go to Granny's here in just a little bit, I'm going to make triple, triple, triple copies of everything. Yeah, I'll let my mom have a set. I'll let Granny have a set. I don't care what he said. I want John to have a set. And again, Ms. Evans, Wade, is that an um, accurate copy of that portion of the conversation that you prepared for us today? Yes. This is call number 543 from this particular line. It's a recording from the device named TSC, which was found in the sleeper compartment of the truck. It's dated June 14, 2018 at 1634. The context notes read, Jake and, Jake and George Wagner discuss a, quote, wish list of firearms. We could please play quadruple I twenty one A. We need a dark computer wish list. Thank you. 
BZ-22 FKF-1739. This is Paul, Forest 145 9mm, American 22, Cricket 22. This is Dad, Coach Gun 12, K School Girl 22 Mag, 22 28 over and under. Zodiac 30 out of 6, Red and 99 millimeters. Derringer, uh, MK2, Ruger 2245, CZ 22, or 223, Delta TMR 30. This is Sophie, Cricket 22. Then it says, Jake, American Score Master, and 22 Black, American Score Master, 30 Master, 22 Staten, Ruger 1022 and Olive Green, Rossi 1422 Olive Green. Anyway, Rick 870 Wingmaster, Rick 870 Master Black, Rick 870 Trap Black, uh, Ithaca Black, Mossberg 12 Gauge, Winchester 3030 30 Olive Green, Winchester 9417 Black, Rossi 45 Colt, Browning 8 Volt, Steve Silver, Springfield 33 and Black, Springfield 33 and Black, Infield in Black, Infield in Black. Uh, Forest Millennium 45 ACT, Post 1911 22 with DC Triumph. Which happened, we don't even have because it was just a wish list. Then it says, I've got one, Jack. Maybe we can meet today and we can tell, and you can tell me where the 1911 22 is. I'd really like to address it sooner than later. Your corporation is very appreciated. No more wish list and like that. You in the freaking wish list? Yeah. That's all it said. Exactly what I just showed you. There's a picture of it. Just don't turn it off on my computer. That's it. Don't need to stare at it. exact copy of the conversation that occurred between Jake and George in call number Showing you what has been marked as quadruple I-22. This is call number 6197. It's dated June 14th, 2018 at 2115. 
It's an outgoing call from George Wagner to Angela Wagner, and the context notes read, George and Angela Wagner discuss a picture of a hand holding a gun. And can we please play quadruple I, 22A? Hello. Hey. Yeah. Are you by yourself? Uh, yeah. Did you show me get you the best ones I sent you? Well, let's put it this way. <clears throat> I did not do that. Um, I was opening your thing, and Big Granny walked by me, and she uh, <clears throat> said, Oh, is that a uh, picture that Ryan was sending? And she's like, Look, man, look, that's not Jake's hand. That's not Jake's hand. And Beth looks at her and says, yes, it is. No, it's not. But well, that's what she said. I did not do it, Well, that's what she said. And Granny said, I don't think so. You think that your husband's hand it sure don't look like it's me? And she said, yep, that's Jake's hand. That's his thumb, all right. She's full of crap. Well, Georgia, I know. I know that, okay? Jake just wants to know if somehow she's seen them. Yeah, well, don't, you better hope to God they don't call her to the stand. That's what don't I'm going to say. Don't you I don't go hey. yeah. Okay, and again, Ms. Evans-Lage, is that an accurate copy of the call between Angela and George Wagner um, reflected in call number 6197? Yes. Your Honor, if we may approach, please. Yes.
until 3.30. Uh, you'll be uh, coming back up here at 3.30. You'll be brought up by court personnel, and you'll be uh, listening to some more uh, recordings at that time. Um, while you're on break, do not discuss this case among yourselves or with anyone else. Do not permit anyone to discuss this case with you or in your presence. Do not form or express an opinion concerning the case. Do no research as to the facts or the law of the case from any source at all. Do not read, view, or listen to any reports or accounts of the case from any source at all and have no contact with any participants in the trial, including parties, counsel, or witnesses. Is there anything further from counsel for either side before we break until 3.30? No, Your Honor, thank you. All right, we are in recess then until 3.30 this afternoon. At that time, jurors are to assemble at the jury room.
they're, they are in the process of printing and stapling the transcripts or the, the listening aids for the jury. Okay. This is a call that we'll definitely need it for. It's about 20 pages. They've been printing for a few minutes. I think Andy just ran down. She should be out here in a few minutes. But, but we're very close. Uh, all right. I don't know if Jason's bringing them up or not, but I guess it really, as long as we don't start, we can just wait a moment to. Let me ask this, how, how long do we anticipate since that sounds like that's a fairly long? 45, 44-ish minutes. Okay. It's a call of 54, but the first 10 minutes is dead, so we're going to start it at the 10-minute mark. So, okay, so that, but that'll pretty much take us to yeah, quitting yeah. time for the day. Yeah. And then the first uh, witness tomorrow morning at 9 would be a defense witness. I think he is. Will this be a 502? Is that where we are? Not the 502, Your Honor. We still have more recordings for tomorrow. It's a 502. 502. Will this be a 502? Yeah. <laughs> While, while you were out, uh, Ms. Knepp, it was discussed a little bit. This probably will be the last uh, recording place. It today. is 45 minutes long, so it'll take us up to our meeting, go past 4.30. So probably is a good time to break. We're ready for the jury. Thank you. I was in there with her, but not in, I put, not in yeah, the not in stall yeah. with me here. It's not like that.
may be seated. And the state may resume questioning. Okay. Um, Ms. evans -Lage, I am already um, up on the screen. It's State's Exhibit Quadruple I-23. Can you tell us what that is, please? Yes, this is call number 502 from this particular line. It's a recording from the device named TSB that was found in the sleeper um, part of the truck. It's dated 620, excuse me, June 26, 2018 at 1958. And the context notes say, George and Jake and George Wagner talk about Beth and their living situation. of the record, we are going to start this call at 10.07 um, by agreement of the parties. Um, the first 10 minutes will not be played, um, but wanted to make that clear for the record. That's agreed to by yes. I'm 
have to prove it to be a lie. I want to know if it's Thank you. 
Yeah. You've always got songs. Well, hell, going over the world. I don't know. I don't know. That's where one person will say, I'm going to do that then. Fine. I'll follow the first one. We've got to go. I'm going to start dating Sam. And then she comes with me. Now let's see how her live there with me. If you get turned out of the house with my son, that's all I care about. Oh. I don't care. If you're not there, I am too. There he is. But I want to hear this one. Do you know what I'm doing? Yeah, he's got it. Yeah, you know all that 60 right now? If you get that all up the air, if you take off that thing you got, don't you grab it if you have, if you want money ticket, which he leaves you, we're going to use it all against us. Every last piece of it. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
record, I don't know that I said it, but that was quadruple I-23A. And does that accurately, is that an accurate copy of the conversation between Jake and George from June 26, 2018, call number 502, except for the first 10 minutes, or 10 minutes and 7 seconds? Yes. Yes. All right, so the time, counsel agree it's time for an evening recess? Yeah, I think the next call would probably take us past 5, Your Honor, so I don't know. Well, let's do a little recess for the evening then. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to recess now until 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. At 9 o'clock tomorrow morning, please present yourselves to the jury room. You'll be brought up by court personnel from the jury room to the courtroom. While you're, until you're back here at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning, do not discuss this case among yourselves or with anyone else. Do not permit this case to be discussed with you in your presence by anyone. Do not form or express an opinion concerning this case. Do no research at all concerning the case, either as to the facts or as to the law from any source at all. Do not read, view, or listen to any reports or accounts of the case from any source at all, including newspapers, radio, and television, and also Facebook, other social networking sites, or any internet sites. And have no contact with participants in the trial, including parties, counsel, or witnesses. Does counsel on either side have anything you wish to put on the record before we recess until 9 o'clock tomorrow morning? No, thank you. No, Your Honor, thank you. All right, we are in recess until 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. Jurors, please leave your notepads on your seat while your badge is on. We'll be back tomorrow morning. Thank you.